Uh oh, bird alert. Bird alert. Abort. Okay, we're here. Welcome to the Gaming Galleon, my friends! Welcome to the Gaming Galleon, crewmen. Welcome to the Gaming Galleon, mateys. Welcome to the Gaming Galleon, ensigns. And lieutenant commanders. And captains and admirals. Welcome to the Gaming Galleon. I'm Captain Raz. Just another run of the mill pirate and video game addict who somehow ended up with a pirate ship. And what am I going to do? Just sit around and play video games on it all day? Of course not. We got to get out there and do adventures. We got to see the world. We got to see the worlds. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we're going to do today. We've got a lot going on. We're talking about one of my favorite subjects in the known galaxy, Star Trek. In uh, celebration of the Star Trek's uh, just now past 50th anniversary. We've got the chest here. Good little lot going on here. We've got some oddities and some really good deals. Uh, uh, I was supposed to t you know, it's, uh, you, you get these people who are like, hey, Oh, you doing a show today? Give me a call. I can't do that. I forget. You know, uh, we're in the show. When am I supposed to text you now? Uh, oh, well. It, like, the, maybe they should text me in the at noon. When are you starting? You know what I mean? Oh, well, whatever. It's not like it's going to be, you know, lost forever. Anyway, Star Trek, the next, uh, Star Trek 25th Anniversary Edition for the Nintendo Entertainment System is what we're playing. We'll crack into the chest around the bottom of the hour. And then finally, of course, we have your questions, concerns in this fat little bag. It really just, it, it, like, every time I look at it, I, I tear up a little bit. You know, all the effort that you guys put into the questions, it means a lot that I know that they're there. Because trust me, there have been a, my share of voyages where I did have to text somebody right, right before the show uh, and say, can you get a question in within the hour? A lot of people have fallen victim to that. Okay, so anyway, uh, let's talk about Star Trek. Now, if you didn't know, last week... Uh, you may or may not have known, not to date this, but uh, last week we celebrated our 50th voyage here on the Galleon. 50 different locations, and uh, we had a bit of a contest. I won't go into that if you're interested uh, as to what that was. Watch the show. It's called The Gaming Galleon, our 50th voyage. Uh, but because we wanted to make it a little special, we wanted to have a little uh, interaction uh, with the audience, with the crew... Uh, that show really had to be set in stone. And as we approached that show, as excited as I was about it, I started hearing about other things that were like, oh my gosh, I almost want to call an audible here. Uh, one was Labor Day. There's a game I, I would have really liked to have celebrated for Labor Day. That happened to be the week of uh, our 50th voyage. That wasn't a big deal. But then I started to get in wind that Star Trek's 50th anniversary was the very day of our 50th anniversary. Can you imagine? Now, that may not be a big deal to you, but it, it, it's like as big of a black hole of a deal to me. Because, uh, you know, I, I don't think that there's a bigger influence when you're talking fiction uh, and even personal ethics for me personally, than what I learned from all the years of watching Star Trek. Uh, it is probably, certainly, hands down the most influential piece of fiction that I have ever consumed. Uh, and to this day, I still do. I, um, I've actually seen every single episode uh, prof you know, that was professionally published uh, by Paramount Studios uh, of Star Trek. Every single season, every single series, every single movie, even every single episode of Star Trek, the animated series. I have seen them all. Many of them uh, more than once. And uh, I, I gotta tell you, I mean, if there's one show that I would uh, watch... Stuck on a desert island, if I could only watch one more show, if there's only one show I could pass on to someone, it would be Star Trek. So, you know, to do it, uh, a 50th anniversary show for Star Trek on our 50th voyage, playing Star Trek the 25th Anniversary Edition, 
you know, could it have gotten more perfect? But obviously, we come first, and our celebration came first. So we did our 50th voyage, but now here we are on our 51st, and I'm very excited to finally give it up to uh, my friends who trek through the stars. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Now let me tell you about where the, the ship itself is today. Uh, the old galleon, uh, you know, obviously we're, we're dealing with space here. Uh, we were contacted by the Enterprise to come out with some uh, emergency dilithium, which we did. They were uh, sucked through a wormhole to uncharted space. And we brought them a little bit of dilithium, but we're actually within the bowels of the Enterprise. If you, if you listen closely, you can actually hear the hum of the ship. Now most of the woods, most of the, uh, you know, most of the insulation of the wood within the pirate ship itself, within the galleon itself, is, is keeping a lot of that out. But you can hear a little bit of it. In fact, I'm, one, I'm getting one shaky part in your corner here. Let me, let me kill this. Because I think that's going to bother us the whole hour. Maybe I can muffle it a little bit for you. But I'll tell you what. If, uh, if I had my way... <laughs> <laughs> Talking about nerd alert. Uh, I would love to have, uh, like, if I had money, you know, I would, uh, I'd pump into all my rooms in my house the, the hum of the engines, uh, you know, through like an intercom system. Because I find it very calming. It's one of the interesting things about that show. You're always hearing that hum while uh, you're watching any of the Star Treks. Have you watched Star Trek? Do I need to go into what it is? Uh, maybe I do. There, there are some people who may not have watched it. You see, I grew up during the golden age of Star Trek. Now, some people would say that's the 60s, but it's really not. That's just when Star Trek started. For me, I'd say the golden age of Star Trek was in the late 90s. The main reason for that being Star Trek The Next Generation had reinvigorated the series. Uh, and was so popular that they created other spin-offs that continued on in the same timeline. And, you know, looking at science fiction in the 90s and looking at it today, and just media in general, I remember watching those shows as a child and a teenager and really feeling like, you know, everything's going to be okay. Like, humanity's going to find its way. You know, we're, we're struggling in the 1990s. But, I, you know, you looked at Star Trek. You looked at where we were going to be 400 years in the future, traveling the galaxy, aligning with other planets and alien races, being explorers. I would watch that show every week, and I would, I would get a lot of hope. And it would really play into how I treated people day to day um you know i think the parable would be you know how did you treat a gay person in the 90s compared to how you treated him now a lot of people you know um you know not to get too too controversial but in the 90s it was okay to you know uh make light of somebody being uh you know a little light in the loafers and uh you know not uh wanting to or like, you know, shoving them off, saying, eh, I don't want to hang out with that guy. Well, I actually hung out with a lot of gay people at that time. And I, I believe it or not, you know, I lived in a kind of a progressive, you know, southern uh, part of, of Chicagoland. Pr pretty progressive area. But I also, you know, would, I'd also tip my hand off a little bit to Star Trek on that. Because every week I would sit down and I would see humanity's, you know, uh, you know um, prejudices and limitations being challenged. And I felt like that, you know, I tried my best to live that way. Uh, I was also a Boy Scout at the time. Um, that's certainly not the military or anything like that, but it's the closest thing that I've ever been to, uh, an organization that, that helped community. And uh, I used a lot of uh, what I, I saw in Star Trek, even my vocabulary, um, I think, evolved because of Star Trek, but, uh, you know, many ways, how I treated people and how I looked at people, that all came from, from what I learned from, uh, you know, Captain Picard and Lieutenant Data and, uh, you know, 
Jordy LaForge, and uh, Deanna Troy. And I know some of you people don't know who these people are, and that's okay. Um, but uh, I guess I'm just trying to tell you, you know, this was just not another show for me. This was almost um, a parable of how, to, how you should live. And now, you know, you look at science fiction today, um, Star Wars is king. I'm way over. We gotta get over. We gotta get done. Uh, so, you know, this is kind of a forgotten thing. You know, Star Trek has been reinvented. They've uh, made some movies. They're action movies. They're good movies, but they're they've completely rewritten the timeline. So everything that we're seeing now just doesn't exist anymore. And uh, for me, that's kind of tough. So let's go back to the 25th anniversary of Star Trek. Nintendo Entertainment System. I loved this game. Played it all the way through as a kid. And I spent quite a bit of time uh, with it now to get us ready. But I didn't want to go in totally knowing everything. we got to get started. I'll, I'll tell you more about it later. Again, we're sitting in the bowels of the, the Enterprise right now. And we'll get filled in as to what, what the situation is once we get to the bridge. Okay? It's Star Trek. The 25th anniversary for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Engage. Can you hear the hum? All right, so here we are on the bridge. You know, from a game point, this is the coolest thing about this game is you're playing Kirk. And if you're going to play Kirk, the captain of the Enterprise, you're, of course, going to be sitting in the chair. Now, you've got your navigational and your, uh, and your helmsman up here in the front. And obviously, we've got our view screen. We're uh, orbiting a planet here. Uh, we were looking for di uh, where we just got a little bit more dilithium, met up with uh, the galleon and doctor. Oops. Drop my hat. And, uh, but let's take a look at this, the bridge. If you don't know anything about Enterprise, about Star Trek, you have a science officer. Now, that's Spock here. Let's see what Spock's got to say. He runs sensors. He's basically the ship's eyes. Mr. Spock, status, sensor status. All right, we're being monitored by the Romulan ships in this area, Captain. Okay, now let me tell you what he's talking about. We're low on dilithium, okay? We got to get out of here. We got to get to the next place that has dilithium. But if we check our star charts here, Funny thing about this game is it actually starts the, the Enterprise going into a wormhole and ending up in uncharted space. It's very akin to Voyager, years before Voyager was ever made. They're just trying to get home, okay? So now we've finally reached the border of the Romulan Empire, and we need to make it all the way to the neutral zone to a planet called Shroud 4, where hopefully... We can get a little more dilithium and make our way into Federation space and home. Now, I'm going to set the navigation to get us a shroud. It's a Class M planet. That means we can breathe there. And it looks like it's 377 light years away. That's a long way. So we're going to set course. And we're going to zip through Romulan space as fast as we can. I have no idea what lies beyond the, the border, okay? I played a lot of this. There's a lot of story that got us to the border here, so I know the mechanics of the game. But I don't know what lies between us and the neutral zone. Let's do it. Engage. Mr. Chekhov! Plot a course. Course plotted. And laid in. I can't do uh, Russian, by the way. Alright, so this should be go... Okay, what, what's happening? Fox already on it. Captain, a Romulan Armada has uncloaked at point blank range. Yeah, how about that, huh? Not only are we dealing with the entire Romulan Empire, but they can all be invisible. Yellow alert, full stop, Mr. Sulu. And you see this? We're going to play it the way the Federation wants us to. We're only one ship against the whole Empire, so we better play this smart. Oh, man, there it is. Romulan Bird of Prey. How do you play it smart? You talk your way out. 
USS Enterprise. You violated the peace treaty of Stardate 1200 Mark 5. Dot 5? Point 5? We demand an explanation for this action. Now, this isn't Star Wars. We're not gonna go blasting, okay? It's a Star Trek. We're diplomats, we're explorers. That's it? What's happening? Uh, why'd everything stop? What's your spot? Extends your status. Okay. Uhura, you got anything? She's our communications officer. Oh, I know what we need. To, I don't want to go red alert. Is that what we need? You trying to get me to go red alert? Look, let's keep this in mind here. This is Star Trek. But it's also the Nintendo. The Nintendo never tells you about what you, they want you to do. It looks like the only thing I can do here is go red alert. Which means shields up, ready for battle. Well, what do you want me to do? I know! I... Right! Exactly, Spock! Perhaps there's a diplomatic solution. I mean, I agree. But they're, they're not talking to me. I don't want to... Okay. Alright, so... So I aborted. Uh, n no button is working except for... Here. And we've got Chekhov, who's the helmsman. Our Chekhov's navigator. Sulu's helmsman. I don't know why they would help. Communication, communicate with the other ship. That's what the, that's what we need to do. Okay, all right, I got it. Sorry about that. It's actually the first time I've communicated with another ship. This is Captain James T. Kirk. We have no hostile intentions. We're here due to conditions beyond our control. All right. Captain Kirk, we will examine your ship's records and history files to verify your account. So we're gonna let him in, huh? Gonna let him see the guts? I guess we got no choice. It appears that your account of the disturbances coincide with ours. We will escort your craft to Shroud 4. Awesome! Do not deviate from that course. Uh, that's great. That's all we wanted. Wow. I can't believe it worked out. You see that? And that's what Star Trek's all about. Diplomacy. And why this is actually a very good Star Trek game. Okay. Approaching our destination, Captain. Slow to impulse. Standard orbit, Mr. Sulu. Aye, Captain. Shroud 4? Let's see it, baby. Oh, there she is. Alright, how are we doing on time? We could actually hit the booty segment here. Now in standard order, sir. Excellent. That's great. Uh, wow, I can't believe we made it. Let's check uh, with Scotty on the ship status. He's the chief engineer. Mr. Scott, ship status. She's holding together fine, sir. All right, good. Okay, so the ship's good. Uh, we're going to beam down to the planet. And then once we're down there, we'll, uh, yeah, let's hit the booty, okay? All right, so we got to, we're, we got to set up our landing party. Of course, we're going to go with Spock and Leonard McCoy, uh, the doctor, ship's doctor. Um, that's, these are the three, you know, main guys in, in the original Star Trek, if you didn't know. The three main friends. But I want to show those of you who know about Star Trek how cool the landing party thing is. 
Because in addition to picking, you know, you'd think it'd be just, you know, all the main guys, Spock and Uhura uh, and Scotty. It's actually not. You can pick Spock. You can pick McCoy. And then, it, it's, instead of one of those, you can actually bring down a history officer or a biology officer or a geology officer. You know, they're kind of no-name guys, but they're very helpful in, in having you learn the planet around you. And then finally, if you really want to go blasting, you can bring in a security officer. And, uh, you know, I love how it's a sign from Daily Duty roster. You know, the random red shirts who always die. Uh, you know, he's got another, another phaser and he will fight with you. So that's pretty cool. But we'll stick with the main three. We got to get the McCoy in the mix here. So we'll hit the turbo. No, this is this is neat. It's a nice touch. You got the exchange between Spock and Kirk. Happens all the time. Captain, we should have no difficulty obtaining dilithium on this planet. I am not so sure, Spock. Why are you so confident? This planet is well known as the home of highly competitive rare item dealers. Oh, I like it. You mean black market swindlers? <laughs> yeah, Crux Encounters! We're among friends! Why, yes, Captain. I believe some are also Romulan renegades. Ooh. Fascinating. So there's McCoy there. The three of us. Energize. Those that you, I tell you what, I, when I was playing this as a kid, this was amazing. This was amazing. This got me pumped. And down we go. The magic of television. So we'll leave it there. We'll, uh, we'll leave it there on the surface of Shroud 4. Somewhere in the neutral zone. No law out here. And we gotta grab some dilithium. But we'll keep it here for now. And we'll get back to the awesome music, too. Alright? Okay, that's it. Alright, so that worked out. I mean, thank, thank God for diplomacy. I mean, you know, what were there, like six, seven uh, planets there in the Romulan Empire? Could you imagine if we had to blast our way through all that? That, that probably would not have gone well. Okay, uh, and you know, it's the beauty, beauty of this game. There are some really bad Star Trek games. They're games that are based off of just space battles. There's even a game uh, that we probably do one day called uh, Star Trek Voyager Elite Forces, which is, believe it or not, a first-person shooter. The tagline being, on the, on the box art, Star Trek Voyager Elite Forces set phasers to frag. Pretty sure it was made in the Unreal Tournament era. Uh, so yeah, you know, there's some really bad Star Trek games out there, but this one, and they also made a 25th anniversary for the PC, I've been able to play both. Never finished the PC one, but they were both excellent games. And no, and from what I've seen, no game has uh, since personified Star Trek as well as uh, as these two titles. Okay, let's get into the old chess here. All right, there we go. Checking the mess hall. Uh, checking our time. We're doing good on time. I think we've got about 10 minutes to get this done. So if we got three uh, interesting things here. One's a really good deal. One's kind of middle ground. And one's just an oddity. Uh, this one's probably one you're going to tell your friends about now, uh, you know, down the line one day at a party. Okay, so let's go with the kind of middle ground one here to start. Uh, we just picked up some PSP games here. They were a buck each. Uh, I believe they were a buck each. They weren't more than a buck. I know that for sure. But uh, I'm going to say a buck. This is actually a while back, so you'll forgive me if I'm not totally know exactly. But you got five of them here. Pretty decent titles. We'll start with Crash of the Titans. I've never played this, but this seems to me like... Uh, I don't know, like, he's, he's on kind of a, a whole bunch of different monsters. 
And I, I guess uh, maybe it's kind of akin to, uh, you know, Suits and Super Mario World. Only you're riding guys. I don't know, I never played it. Uh, next one here, Final Fantasy Tactics. Very hard to pass this one up for a dollar. We had it in the hold. But it's a phenomenal title. And um, it's remastered. It was originally a PlayStation 1 game. Remastered for the PSP. Wow, looks like it's got some pretty cool reversible box art here. It's the entire uh, world of... Uh, Hmm, the name of this wor name of this world escapes me, but uh, that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool looking map. And uh, yeah, this is uh, I think they added some new cutscenes for this. Uh, great game, very good. This is probably gonna be a gift to someone who's got a PSP. Oh yeah, they're lining up, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, you got Final Fantasy One. Also more common than you would think. But again, for a buck, uh, the remastered of the NES game, very cool. Never played that one, nor have I played this one. Final Fantasy II, a game that did not make it to the NES, uh, did not make it to American Shores until many years later. You got Final Fantasy II here, uh, you know, completely remastered, and uh, you know, cutscenes, almost like a Final Fantasy VII kind of format. And then finally, uh, this was really great to pick up because I was talking to a guy just maybe a week or two before who was trying to get me to pay like four bucks for this game. And, or maybe like five bucks, I think. Just the disc. And I'm trying to talk the guy down for a bundle. He's not having it. He thinks he's, he's given the deal of the century. And then I find John of Dark, which is an exclusive to the system. Uh... Another cool box art here. Another cool reversible box art for, for a dollar. Complete and in excellent condition. Who, didn't, who made this? That was insane. I think it's Sony. I think it's Sony. Okay. All right. So, yeah, that was a pretty good deal. Oh, and also, uh, I don't know. She had, she, she had like a little handheld area. And in there... There was a Mario Kart. I'm going to probably guess. I don't think I got that for that good of a deal. I could be wrong. But in the interest of me not really knowing, I'm going to say I paid $5 on that. Um, I might have paid 3 but I'm going to say 5 And then she had, like, just some memory cards, a couple of PS1 memory cards. You can never go wrong with these. And a PS2 memory card. Looks like it might just be 8 meg. I don't know. There's a sticker on it. But I was like, how much of the memory card? She's like a quarter each. So I couldn't leave that. Couldn't leave that behind. So that was uh, five bucks in the PSP games. Probably another five on the DS game, which is overpaying. Maybe, maybe if I wait till Christmas, let those Amazon prices go up a little bit, I might be able to sell that. And we'll get all this for free. So that was around ten bucks, eleven bucks rounding up with the memory cards. Okay? All right. Not a bad deal. Okay, this is a cool deal, though. I was really excited about this one. Um, thrift stores. I mean, come on. You're just not going to find good stuff at a thrift store. You're just not. Not, not consistently. you uh, you got to show up at weird times. you got to be lucky. Either that or you show up four times a day. And I have heard guys... At like Goodwills and stuff, talking to like guys that like uh, like I'll be looking at at some game. I'll be you know I'll be browsing around, and then some customer will be, like a clerk will walk up to a customer and be like, "Hey Bill, how you doing? Back again, huh?" It's like, "Yeah, yeah." Seen anything? The clerk's like, "No." All right, well I'll be back in a couple hours. So you got guys that are going there like to these thrift stores like three, four times a day, and they're out there. And they, look, I'm a bum, okay? I mean, I walk around in, you know, stupid t-shirts and shorts and flip-flops all the time. But you got these sharks out there, and I'm a shark. But you got, you got these other sharks out there who, you can tell they just walked right off of the eBay site. And they're there to make deals. They're like, full-on button-up shirt and like slacks. 
I don't know if they're like, you know, spending time there instead of going home to the wife or what, but it's like, it's creepy to me to see like somebody who's like really uh, white bread uh, trying to hunt deals. They're out there. Sharks are out there, man. I'm seeing them all the time these days. We're, you know, we're, we're bumping noses constantly. It's, it's a meat market. Okay, that's not right. It's a, uh, it's a rat race. That's probably not right, not right either, but that's better than a meat market. Okay, uh, so let's get into this deal. Anyway, thrift store, we got lucky. Uh, this is, um, we, we've scored there now and then. I've seen found some weird stuff at this place. We found an NES power pad there once in the box. We found Shovel Knight on its own for the 3DS. And then we found this lot. And let me see which ones we found first. I want to kind of go in order here. So the first ones we found were these guys. You had uh, Tomb Raider 2 complete with what appears to be a 1999 sticker on her on her eyes. But the game looks like it's in cherry condition. Well, not cherry. Ooh, that might be a deep cut. I don't know. But I was already like, eh, Tomb Raider 2, we already have a pristine copy. I mean, you know, very easy to find. Uh, so I wasn't really dying to get it, ne ne nor was I dying to get this. Uh, Oddworld Abe Odyssey with a beat-up manual. And again, 1999 on it. I knew that wasn't going to be the asking price. Disc looks used, but okay. Um, you know, there's no box art. I mean, what a mess. So we were going to leave this behind. Because this, this uh, store tends to price really bad. For one thing, they have a policy where if you find something with no price, uh, they will take it away from you and leave it so that it goes into the back, back to the back room to sit for another 24 hours until the daily pricer comes back to reprice it. Doesn't that suck? So you could find something you really wanted, and if you can't find a price on it, they're going to take it from you, and it's going to go back into limbo, and you have to tr try and find it again 24 hours later. Doesn't that suck? So I was already like, well, I'm not going to bother with these. Uh, you know, even with no price, I know that they're... They usually charge somewhere around three bucks for their their games. Bad. I've seen some terrible prices on games at this place. Terrible. But then I started digging around a little more, and I found this one. It's like a shelf under. We got X Files for the PlayStation One with some grease paint there, telling us that yes, this has a price of two eighty two. Okay, this is a four disc set. Believe it or not, four discs in this game. Uh, this is uh, an adventure game. Uh, Eva Destruction, the ship's phenom, who does all the drawings for the ship. Um, she's she's into the X Files. I know she's got a copy of this. I don't think she's played through this one, but it's an adventure game. You can see there's pictures, and then a bunch of icons at the bottom there, and uh, four discs. So they weren't screwing around on that one. Uh, so 282, I was gonna grab it. That's not too bad. It's not like a really hard to find title or anything, but I grabbed it. Um, I grabbed this one too because I wasn't sure if we had it. We might have this on Dreamcast, but at this point I was just kind of grabbing stuff that I didn't think we had, and it didn't have a price on it. So again, I was like, Ugh, I hope they're not going to ding me and take this stuff away. So let me tell you a little story about a, a month ago uh, a buddy of mine not has, has started a stream for the entire King's Field series and if you don't know what King's Field is it is uh, the precursor series to the Demon Souls and Dark Souls series it's basically Dark Souls for the PlayStation 1 and he was he I think he Facebooked he was like does anyone have King's Field the original for PlayStation 1 this is such an old game that it's in one of those old long boxes. And I wrote him and I said, yeah, yeah, I got it. He's like, okay, oh, well, I, yeah, leave it to Captain Raz, of course. You know, I was like, yeah, we'll pull it out of the hold for you. You can borrow it, do whatever you want to do, do your stream or whatever. 
And he's like, that's great. And I'm like, yeah, I only, I don't have all of them, though. I have, we've got Kingsfield, we have Kingsfield, the Ancient City, which is the PlayStation 2 one. Only three of them made to America, made, the, made it to America. We have two of the three. I've never been able to find Kingsfield 2 for the right price. And he's like, well, what's the right price? And I'm like, uh, you know, a ridiculously unfair price. He's like, oh, right. And then he, he sent me, you know, like, I think like a few days later, he sent me an, email, an eBay lot, which was like $20 for maybe nine games. And one of them was Kingsfield 2. But it was just the disc with, you know, just a whole bunch of other crap. And I was like, this is nice, thanks, but I, I don't, I think I'm going to hold out for a full copy of Kingsfield 2. And this is what it's all about. You know, to find a game that you've been looking for for years. Just out of nowhere. It's what, it's what we do here. You know, that's why we're here every week. For this moment. You know, it's just, it feels so sweet. So now as this one goes out to you, pal. That one goes out to you. Kingsfield 2. So we got the whole trio here. And if you're... I think he ended up buying them all imported, which is really cool. Uh, I think he's he's playing all the imported versions. Kingsfield 1, 2, and 3. Uh, maybe in a, even a fourth one. I think there's a fourth one that never made it here. But yeah, Kingsfield 2. Look at the artwork there. Very dark. Foreboding game. Uh, made by... Uh, from software... Although it doesn't say it here. Looks like it was brought over by ASCII. Um, but yeah, I was like, wow. But again, what do we got? We got $19.99 on it. And no other price. Are we going to be okay? Are we going to be okay? Next, we found Mr. Driller. This is pretty sweet. I always wanted this for Dreamcast, but I'll totally take this for, uh, for the PS1. It's a puzzle game. Uh, you know... Nothing to write home about, but again, but around retro gamers, uh, this game's got a pretty high uh, pedigree. Well, it's missing the uh, the front here. It's got the back box art, you know. Uh, not too bad. That's pretty cool. Grab that one. This is a weird one. Music MTV Music Generator. I don't see this one too often. It's really not worth anything. I mean, who wants to do, except for maybe First Mate Bismuth. He's probably drooling over this right now. Uh, but uh, you got, you know, MTV Music Generator, express your inner beats. It looks like, actually, you can play four players with this. So four of you can be doing the beatbox at the same time via the multi-tap. It's kind of cool. It's only one disc, but when you open this up, it's got the manual, the disc, and then in addition to it, you got my favorite, an old PlayStation Magazine demo disc, which has uh, You Don't Know Jack, Ultimate 8 Ball, and Macross. Oh no, here's the playables. Playables are Final Fantasy VIII, Jade Cocoon, Three Extreme, Tiny Tank, and Centipede. A couple of RPGs there. Kind of cool. I love doing RPG demos. You know, it's uh, it's got that charm of a PS1 RPG, but you don't have to play it for 70 hours. Another one I was really happy to see, Dino Crisis 2. This was exclusive to the PlayStation. Dino Crisis 1 made it to the, D the Dreamcast as well. The first one pretty much is just Resident Evil with dinosaurs. But this one, they really amped up the action. Uh, so this is more of a run and gunner. And uh, I've never really heard any bad, bad news about this one. We've got a nice, really nice cherry complete copy of this. Whereas this guy is missing the back, but the disc is in nice condition, and at least we've got the box art. I don't know what we're going to do with this guy. I don't know. We'll see. Certainly in demand, though. Looks like we've got a PlayStation 2 demo disc pack here. you got a PlayStation 1 demo disc. I love these. Oh, this one sucks. What? Wow. This has got to be the worst demo disc I've ever seen. PlayStation Magazine, the playable demos, there's like a whole bunch of previews, but the one playable demo is Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX. That's it? Wow, a slow month. 
And then they got lazy with these PlayStation 2 magazine demos in that they didn't write what games were on them. But if you look here, if you know your PS2 games, you'll know that that's, that's most certainly uh, Ico. Uh, so this is going to be some sort of Ico demo with Lord knows what else is on there. So that's cool. Got to love a little Ico. And then again, who you have no idea what this would be. Need for Speed, maybe? Uh, or Guitar Hero? I don't think it would be Guitar Hero on a demo disc, but that'd be pretty lame. And then, on the bottom row, I mean, as I'm looking, there's all CDs and PC games and crap. And on the bottom shelf, how are we doing on time? About 19 minutes. Magic Carpet, what are you talking about? The long box of Magic Carpet? 282 with a price? There's no, no manual. But man, have I been looking for this one for a long time. Never played it. Oh, she does. She seem better. To, I want to. I almost want to. There's sometimes you'll see a little schmutz, and my first instinct is to lick it. And thank God, I think better of that. Who knows what's on there? But God, I hope this guy plays. Really cool. It's kind of like a real gun, a real shooter. But you're on a on a uh, a flying carpet and you're shooting fireballs. Sounds really cool. I've never played it. Very early in the PlayStation ones library and obviously you can tell that from the box here uh but really cool to get this for for 282 really neat and then finally one other long boxer you got zoop which is a multiplayer puzzle game nothing to write home about in fact i may have i may have left this behind for 262 but it's very hard to leave behind a long box game that you don't have, and shockingly, one that really doesn't have any cracks in it. So, pretty nice. Not bad at all. This is such an old game that this game was actually on the Super Nintendo as well. So, very old game. Okay, so some of these had prices. You got 262, 282, so you're looking at like 520. And then I think the only one that, other one that had a price was the Xbox, so or X Files. So that's seven around eight bucks for these three. Um, and not the best titles, but those long boxes go a long way. What can I say? So we had all these here that had no prices. I put Odd World and, and Tomb Raider 2 down. I didn't really care about those. We really needed to walk out the door with Mr. Driller. We really needed to walk out the door with King's, Kingsfield 2. Um, you know, so there was good stuff here that needed to, to come with us. And when I brought it up there, there were no... I, I, I waited... I tried to wait for the right girl who I thought was not going to just go by policy right away. Maybe she would shrug it off and make her own prices. Uh, she didn't do that. She asked the person I was avoiding what the price would be, and ironically, the person I was avoiding to bring me up said, oh, if they're CDs and not marked, they're just 101, 101 each. I'm like, 101? Well, in that case, we'll take Tomb Raider 2 and Oddworld as well. So, pretty nice. So we got Music Generator for a buck. All these uh, demo discs were in one thing. They all came for a buck. Dino Crisis 2 was a buck. Mr. Driller's a buck. Tomb Raider Revolution, and of course, Kingsfield 2. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Around eight bucks there. Fifteen bucks out the door for these. I couldn't have been happier. Well, I could have been a little happier maybe if these didn't have prices, but you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> All right, and then finally, one little oddity, and then we'll uh, head back to Shroud 4, located deep in the neutral zone. Uh, we found this, Lord, I don't even remember. I mean, certainly a thrift store, right? It, yeah, this was, uh, at a, at another thrift store behind the counter. Uh, I don't know what to make of it, but for the price, I thought it was too weird to not pass up. Hey, Reyes, why don't you ever get PC games? Well, here you go. 
Here's a big box PC game for you. When's the last time you played Mario's Game Galaxy by Interplay? You don't see this every day. You don't see Nintendo whoring Mario out. Excuse my language. Uh, let's take a look inside the Interplay box. I mean, the only other time I can think of that Mario's ever made it outside of a Nintendo game is Hotel Mario for the Philips CDI. So I was like, what is going on with this? I haven't opened this up. Uh, if you look at the top here, you can see right by the Mario there, it was 80 cents. So we, I wanted to see. We'll see what's in here. Doesn't look like there's much to write home about. You got uh, the manual here. Got Mario's Game Galaxy. It looks like it's just a bunch of board games. Let's see. Kind of curious what games we've got. This game. Wow, he looks very nervous. Not Mario, but the other guy. At least I don't know. Do so you think his, his computer's gonna blow up there? I just want to see what games we have. So it looks like there's Checkers, Go Fish. Look at that. Look at Mario. It's like not Mario. And a Mario game being chased by a a, a, chomp, a cheap cheap. With with teeth. Uh, Yoshi's here. No, that's a Koopa Troopa. No, that is Yoshi. You got Yoshi and Koopa. Koopa Troopa there. Drawn differently than usual. How weird is that? Dominoes. Backgammon. And I think that's it. Wait. And Yacht. Which appears to be... Oh, that's funny. That's what they call this? Huh. That's, uh, we play a little dice poker back here sometimes. Now and then, when we get bored. Apparently that's called Yacht. They're, they're playing it the exact same way here. It's dice poker. Well, it's called Yacht from now on, I'll tell you that much. So how about that? Uh, it looks like it's so old that it was on these old little discs. You know, those guys. Mario Ga Mario's Game Galaxy. Who would have thought? Or ga game, game, Mario's Game Gallery. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Okay, so that's it. Uh, let's get back to uh, Shroud 4. we got to find some dilithium for our boys. Uh, you know, but while that sounds interesting, I'm more interested in meeting these scoundrels and crooks that aren't allowed in anywhere else besides the neutral zone where there is no law. So let's check it out. Let's get back to Star Trek, the 25th anniversary edition for the Nintendo Entertainment System. I'm just doing these drive-by <laughs> hits of the, the, the Harpa transition. Is that lazy? It's probably lazy. Okay, take in this music. If you've never heard uh, Star Trek music before, you're going to hear it now. I hope you guys can hear me okay. Okay, so... So I'm the guy in the yellow shirt. By the way, we've got Spock. He's got the pointed ears on my right. And then, of course, my longtime uh, pal and uh, chief surgeon, Leonard McCoy. Oh, boy, we got a bouncer. What do you got? You going to let me in? All right, just give me the look. Oh, no. Oh. Okay. All right. You don't happen to know a tailor, do you? Check out the walk. That's why Shatner gets all the chicks. What's this? Hit the tricorder. The plants seem familiar, but I'm unsure if it's properties. Shall I take a sample? Yes, yes. We'll take it. It's like ramen noodles everywhere. Making me hungry. Yeah, the old uh, force perspective equals uh, barrier NES style there. Hey guys, you want to come with or no? Uh, guys? Guys, there's a butterfly. There's a flower. And they're back. Jim, this flower is very intriguing. Shall I add it to our inventory? Yes. Yes, Spock, I think so. 
Maybe he's gonna put it in his hair, like in that one uh, episode where he gets all all PC. I forget which one that is. That wasn't the hippie one, was it? No, I don't think so. What's with the butterfly? Can I not? No tricorder readings on the butterfly. Well, I'm not gonna shoot it with my phaser. That's that's just not gonna happen. I've got an inventory screen here. Let me just double check. No, I don't. I uh, don't think that's gonna do anything. Oh, the air explorer! <laughs> Again, if you're a Star Trek fan, you've got to be like, "Wow, they did this. They did the music perfect." What's over here? I probably shouldn't be stealing in this woman's shop right away. This guy looks like he's just drinking. No? All right. Well, what is this? It appears to be a bowl of beer nuts, sir. Oh, room 22. What's going on in room 22? Can I get a drink? Oh, here's the replicator. Yeah, hook a brother up. How about a little, uh... How about a little Tranya? Yes. Yes. Fix it. I can't fully repair it, but I will just synthesize, resynthesize foods now. Oh, okay. So, so you're saying you you can't create food, but you can copy food. Do we have any food yet? No. We've just got uh, the flour. We've got the flour. We've got the plants, and we've got a room key. If this isn't, if this isn't all building up to a really successful Shatner date. Great, let's give it a shot. Got the shh. Oh, we got an Orion slave girl! <laughs> I swear to God, I haven't played this in 20 years. I don't remember anything about what's going to happen here. Oh, Shatner. Even in a Nintendo game, Shatner? Come on. Oh, hello, sweetheart. Oh, wait. Yeah. No, I, uh... No, I want to keep talking. Oh, I think I pressed through Shatner's Mac. I'm sorry about that. Let's see if I give her a flower, what happens. It's so pretty. Here, take this remote control device. There's a boulder in the west? Okay, you got anything else to say to me? No. Alright, thanks, sweetheart. That was awesome. How are we doing on time? Oh, man, we gotta wrap up. Ugh. Alright, let's see what's behind the boulder. Jeez. Did I take too much time with the stupid uh, booty segment? Oh, what a drag, I'm sorry. They said west. Well, what's to the east? Just out of curiosity. Okay, dead end. Come on, Shatner, hoof it. We'll get one question in. I'm trying to think of, like, any time during the hour that we can cut. It's, it's all been gold. It's all, you can't cut Mario's game gallery. Where, where is this boulder you're talking about? Oh, do I have anything I could bribe this guy with? Maybe I could use the, uh, the plant on him. He's probably not gonna like this. Okay. You're still not letting me in? Right. Where is this boulder she's talking about? I think that sign on the building was some kind of map. Oh, this, this, here it is. The thing that I tried to run into. Uh, okay, so... Use item. Remote. There we go. 
This all makes sense, right? An Orion slave girl would have that stuff? What's this? This seems to be a hidden stash. There's a bottle of Saurian drink. Uh, it's In the show, it's called it's Saurian brandy. <laughs> it's Nintendo, so... Sack of credits and a coded message from Harry Mudd to some Romulan renegades. Shall I add them to our inventory? Yes, of course! Can we play the, uh, the, the Harry M Harry Mudd is this, uh, galactic, uh, con artist. Where's the letter? Let's read it. Can I read it? This item can't be used here. Okay. Oh, God. We're out of time. It's a special... In honor of, uh, Star Trek's 50th anniversary, we're gonna go 50 hours. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Hey, you want some brandy? You look thirsty. This guy looks like you're thirsty. Sorry, and Brandy. Yeah, down it, dude. That a boy. That a boy. You know it's diplomacy. You gonna let me through? You gonna? You're looking tired. No, how about? Uh... He appears to be wasted, Captain. Uh, the credits then? All right, I'll give you the credits. Credits are money in this. You didn't figure that out. Okay. You better not start anything. Alright, let's just see what's in the bar. Maybe we can get a drink and then we'll wrap her up. Oh, this is way too cool. Oh my god, there's a Gorn. Oh, I can't believe we have to leave this. This looks like a dead end. We're gonna have to talk to the Gorn and then we'll be we'll be done. Probably gonna kill us. Let's talk to these guys. I don't know who these two are. They just seem to be just dorks. Raz, we're out of time. We're out of time, Raz. Let's just say we we'll just talk to the Gordon real quick, and then we're done. Yeah, Kirk. You have some nerve showing your face around here. He he fought the Gorn and uh. Forgot what episode that was. Uh, you're not passing me until I get a rematch, and this time no cheating. So are we gonna fight? Dun, 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 dun. All right, well then let's fight. Oh, uh, maybe there's a secret pathway. All right, we'll leave it there. God, what ended up happening with the gore, huh? Wow. Dun, dun. <laughs> oh god, that music. Star Trek. Okay, let's get a question. Alright, dig deep in there. Somebody wants in here. All right, here we go. The bag that tells no tales. What question does it reveal today? This comes from uh, Melissa Girl, thirteen fifty six. She says, "What you think of Halo? Uh, Halo was a great one player game and an excellent co op game. Uh, I didn't play anywhere beyond there. At the time, I didn't like Halo at all because Halo basically meant the death of the two D fighting game, uh, the two D genre." In general, uh, I grew up with 2D, so why would I appreciate Halo when that's all everybody wanted to play? I wanted to play 2D fighters. Um, but I finally got to sit down uh, on a big screen TV in the dark with surround sound and play through Halo, the campaign. Excellent game. Excellent. And uh, I always wanted to sit down with a friend and do a co-op. Uh, however, uh, four-player split screen is just not for me. Uh, just not my game. Uh, Time Splitters is my game. Look that one up. Uh, and we'll play it one day here on the Italian. Uh, that's it. Uh, thanks again for coming. Uh, thanks for adventure. Thank you, Gene Roddenberry, creator of Star Trek. And thank you all out there who uh, look at those around you uh, a little um, kinder um, than uh, most of us.
That doesn't make any sense. I'll just say, I, I'm not going to get f philosophical. Thanks for Star Trek. God bless Star Trek. And uh, God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. And until then, farewell and adieu to ye Spanish maidens. Farewell and adieu, ye ladies of Spain. For we received orders for to beat up that gorn. And we may never see ye fair ladies again. Wow, that was, uh, that was amazing. So, uh, ever wrap a Star Trek episode in any traditional way? Oh, live long and prosper. Live long and prosper. And keep that powder dry!